Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this series of videos produced by the Brunswick Heritage Museum along with the Friends of Historic Brunswick. Today we're going to look at the history of the WB Tower here in Brunswick and we certainly hope you enjoy it. Good morning, I'm Norman Cornelius, local Brunswick guy and uh, had some history with the B&O Railroad system back in the 1960s, uh, for the 1960s. And uh, I would like to say welcome to WB Tower, which is standing strong in the, to, the, uh, to the back, uh, to, to my rear back here. WB Tower, I, I would like to clear up an issue, or, or at least add a little bit of uh, verbiage to an issue. WB Tower has, has picked up a couple of aliases over the recent years, the uh, last few recent years. Number one, uh, we, we see some writings where it's referred to as uh, West Brunswick Tower. But it's pretty centrally located in right in the middle of Brunswick, Maryland. So, so it's not really what it is. Also, uh, the tower itself does set on the westbound side, the westbound movement area, by track number one, which is the westbound main. But again, it's the, it's not the westbound tower. The uh, the W the WB the letters themselves refer to it's a tele telegraph. Identification or address back to the uh, back to the, into the 1950s. Uh, you had also located close by Weaverton, Maryland. You had BO Tower, which was a box station tower. Also, Corner Rocks, Maryland. It was JG Tower, and these towers were decommissioned through the 50s and were also uh, torn torn down and destroyed at that time. WB Tower is if we look around the yards and through here, this area, the shop area, it's the last building that was put here by the B&O Railroad system, and we, for that reason we want to try and preserve it and, um, and, and, and move it away from CSX uh, property. The, um, the, like I say, the WB, it's, it's a telegraphic address, and also with, within WB Tower itself there was a sidewalk, what they call a sidewire position was it for administrative work. That also carried a uh, an identification for telegraph. That was UN, as Uniform November. I would like to try and put you know a, a face to uh, to WB Tower by uh, you know advising naming some of the folks who, who worked there. We had a Mr. Shoebridge who from Brunswick who worked in WB. Also, the Grand Frederick County he had Bob Tuck from Point of Rocks work who worked there. He worked at Daylight Shift. On the evening shift, you had Dick Brock, the local Brunswick uh, guy. Uh, the, the midnight shift was Ira White, and you also had on a relief job, Jim White. And um, these are some of the guys. Charlie Selby was local. He worked the side wire position. Also had names like Damon Barnhart and, uh, um, and a few others who locally who worked. Both Stoots worked here for a period of time. And the tower itself is... It's a block station tower, and the purpose was, to, of course, you've got to get from the main track into the yard running tracks and so forth. And the switches were all controlled from WB, the switches and the signals. It could be a very, very busy operation um, uh, back, back uh, through the 60s, 70s. You know, most of your freight, well, all of your freight stopped here. had to be recruited in Brunswick. So that meant stopping. Every engine stopped right at the home signal, at the CBL signal, and, and the head, head end crew was changed out, and, and then also a, a new conductor of brakeman onto the caboose. So it made for a very busy operation, and uh, control the switches themselves uh, in this tower was a couple of different types. Uh, you had a lot of the older tower, old towers had had the Armstrong switches. Which was a very large switch lever, which which took some uh, it, it took a little bit to throw those switches and, and, and get them in place. WB Tower was a combination. The, the plant operated through a combination of electric and air pressure towards the end, and this made throwing those switches a little bit easier. And also, the, the signals signaling system um, in WB Tower was uh, the same one used to be able put in place probably in the mid 20 mid 1920s and was used up through until they decommissioned the tower and um, that was the winter of 2012 around Christmas time they decommissioned the tower that was allowed to happen because of a new signaling system which the CSX had brought into place 
Well, it was CSX and also the state of Maryland referenced the marked trains. So other benefits out of the new signaling system, the only one I can, well, right off the top of my head, it does allow them to run full speed opposite track, either, either direction. I'd like to, you know, I'd always like to refer to WB Tower as uh, more or less, it was, a, it, it was a key role in the movement of freight and passenger service. It, it certainly was the center of the operation for this area from three miles east at Corner Rocks to three miles west at Weaverton, Maryland. The operator uh, in the tower controlled everything that was on the main line and also coming off of the main going into the yard running tracks or the, the opposite out of the, out of the yard running tracks and coming out maybe a freight train heading eastbound on the uh, number two main track. So that was all controlled right here. The, the operator himself was um, you know, it was just kind of the key position. He worked very closely with a dispatcher out of Baltimore, Maryland, for the Baltimore Division. Also, a dispatcher with, on, on the, on Cumberland, Maryland, for the Cumberland Division. These guys at these locations had a very broad look at the entire railroad system and, and had, a, had a, a very important job to do. They worked closely with the operator in WB Tower. The tower, the tower operator also, it, it, it was rely, he relied on all the people around him on the rail here. He had the caller's office was just to the east of the tower. Uh, of course, crewing up trains, and of course, they dealt hourly all the time with the tower, giving him information to be transferred to Cumberland or Baltimore, referencing train uh, tonnage or, or also referencing crew and, uh, and the power of the engines themselves. The, yeah, the operator also, he dealt closely with the clerk's office and got a number of clerks feeding information to the tower operator who in turn had, had put that uh, one, one further down the road to Cumberland or Baltimore, depending which train he's uh, handling. The uh, early, early days, uh, you know, with the, with the, before the communications were wide, you know, widespread the way we have uh, now, you know, there was a time a lot of this transfer of information was done via telegraph, via telegraph. And again, I'll refer back, that's also where WB came into being. Okay, that is the address for this tower and also for the administrative position towards the end, UN, that's also uh, under telegraph. So, quite a busy job. It, it's not one per, one guy's uh, you know, job to, to move freight. It, it, um, it, was, it was something that was done by you know, a, a, a lot of folks who, who worked in different, uh, different areas uh, locally. I'd like to talk just a minute about uh, permission to, to uh, enter a block station by the crew of the train heading eastbound or westbound out of the Brunswick area. That was gained um, uh, through, through the tower operator. The, um, the conductor would actually uh, go up into the tower and there was the uh, between the operator and the dispatchers, either dispatcher, eastbound or west, the, uh, the, the crew would get any train orders related to his trip. Might be slow orders, might different uh, different things that would be in information for that trip, and also a form A would be issued along with that issuing, uh, showing each train order. And with that form A, he could enter the block station. The crew is ready to go. Now you get some of the some of the towers, and on, on occasions uh, that uh, to deliver these train orders would require the operator to come down out of the tower, standing along the edge of the track, and he simply had a a, a port or a hook which was pronged on the end, and those uh, train orders were wrapped, tied with a string, hooked to that port, and at that time he would stand along the track, and there would be just very simply just holding up directly above his head as the train moved by at a slow speed. First the head end would grab his orders and then the conductor on the caboose would grab his set of orders. Without those, you can't go anywhere. They would have to stop the train, walk back to the tower to, and, get, and get the hand delivery of their orders. That would give them permission to enter the block station and off they go with the freight. My name is Cynthia Haggerty. I've lived in Brunswick for about three years. Um, I grew up in a small town that was steeped in history. It was Revolutionary War history. 
My parents were heavily involved in um, reenactment activities at the inn in town. When I bought in Brunswick three years ago, part of the reason was for the outdoor opportunities. So after that, um, Ken, Ken, my partner, got the opportunity. He requested permission from Jeff Snoots, the former mayor, to work on the caboose that we're standing here in nearby. Um, to preserve and protect it and improve it so that it could be used. Um, after that, at about a year, a uh, couple years ago, I joined the EDC. While I was on the EDC, I learned about the importance of tourism. Our city is steeped in history. We have a lot of Civil War history and railroad history that I knew nothing about when I moved here. Um, since then, um, last this this past January, um, Ken and Norm and Wes formed, and Kelly and I and Karen, of course, formed a group called the Friends of Historic Brunswick in order to preserve and protect a lot of our downtown history and history throughout the town. So we believe it's important to use the historical. Uh, historical artifacts that we have here to um, to the benefit of the city. It, it could be used for tourism it, and um, activities, uh, photo opportunities for local people and it just brings the community together. My name is Andy St. John. I'm Brunswick City Councilman. Uh, I've also been a lifelong rail fan, and uh, the WB Tower is extremely important to me. I've always loved trains. I mean, I, I always loved them when I was a little kid. My father has always been a big rail fan. Trains were always a big part of my life. Uh, and I remember when I moved to Brunswick and I first came down here and saw that it was next to a rail yard, I was very excited because trains. The WB Tower is one of the last remaining switch towers existing in the United States. It was also one of the last operational switch towers in the United States. It was only closed in 2011. Um, it's very important to the history of railroading. It's very important to the history of Brunswick. Brunswick still has many citizens living here right now who actually worked in the tower. Uh, it's an important part of our history and it's an irreplaceable part of our history. Now, in, in the interest of preserving it, which the city wants to do, uh, we have uh, made arrangements to purchase the tower from CSX, but we can't stay where it is due to modern railroading operations. It's going to be a safety problem for them. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it across the tracks here up into our city park, which is right next door, where we can preserve it, restore it, take care of it, and have it available for future generations to look at. Um, this is obviously a big job. And it has many concerns, including the uh, floodplain and the uh, ground siting. Um, but we have, uh, the city has made a uh, firm commitment to get this done. Uh, we have a budget, we have grant funding, and we have many uh, people who are contributing to this effort. First among them being the railroad, uh, CSX, which are generously allowing us to get on their property in order to, uh, to do the move. Uh, the city, of course, which is doing providing most of the fundings and the new location. Um, the utility companies to move the lines. There's a contracting company that will actually move the building. Uh, and we have many nonprofits involved, including the Friends of Historic Brunswick who are making this video, uh, the Brunswick Heritage Museum, uh, Preservation Maryland and the Maryland Historic Trust, uh, and the Frederick and Pennsylvania Railroad Museum. Uh, so it's it's a big job and it will take a lot of people working together uh, and it's a lot of red tape, a lot of engineering challenges, but we're looking forward to getting this project done.